Today, the best of the V8 Super Trucks make their way to Nürburgring for what should be a very competitive race, 20 laps around one of the most challenging road courses on the circuit and in the world. We'll see who can conquer this challenge today here on iRacing Live and RaceBot TV. So let's check out the action from last week at Twin Ring Motegi. Heading to the turn number one. Zelensky's off on the gas. We're underway for round number four here from Twain Ring Motegi. Moro had a bit of a defensive line down the straightaway. He's going to have a wider exit. Cones go flying behind them. Moro takes the wide corner and off goes Clampett. If on the brakes. Ran it wide. Oh, Clampett lost the back end there. And the truck goes around it. Waiting for the green flag. Zelensky leads them down, and we're back on racing once again here for the V8 Super Trucks. Zelensky immediately went for the defensive line as Kamarz is now on the outside line, trying to get a pass, can't do so. Drivers that have been in the pits. Oh, we got a car straight off. The 451. This time, Blix made a mistake. This is what he was waiting for. That's Blix. Ends up just barely hanging off, but Kruatov able to get on the back doorstep. It's a no defensive because here's Karone around the outside. Fresh and tires by three laps through the right hander, but he's not able to make it stick it. As Wade Hayes and Clampett battling, Clampett makes the pass on Hayes on the outside just before the tight corner. Reniers, though, trying to keep in front of King, sliding. He is sliding. He's trying to arc it, able to keep it sliding. Still sliding and off the racetrack he goes. He loses two spots. Reniers, he's trying to recover to get back into the top ten. Thompson still bobbling around, and his truck is very loose. I think the tires are gone because he just lost the top ten. In. As Bobby Zelensky sliding and slipping on the exits, but he is very far out. He'll take the checkered flag here at Twin Ring Motegi. Once again, everyone gets all set to go for the V8 Super Trucks Championship, presented by Socks Out Racing. Today, we're at Nuremberg Rings Grand Prix Circuit with no chicane for what should be a challenging round number five of this season. I'm Justin Prince. Alongside in the booth today is Gary Weaver. Paul Smith will help produce today's action on what should be an interesting race. 23 degrees Celsius at the track depth, 77 degrees humidity, mostly cloudy skies with 10 kilometers per hour as the winds on this 3.15 mile circuit. A distance overall that you see a lot of different things to watch for. Kristen Chowder has the track record for fastest lap in race pace for what should be an interesting one. It's been an interesting season to start things off for this season of V8 Super Trucks. And Bobby Zelensky has been an absolutely dominant truck to start off the 2018 season. Let's look at the championship standings right now. He's in front of the only ever race winner in Marco Mogren, as that is a gap that is fairly sizable, but we'll see what happens from here on out. Ben Kamers is in third spot. Eric Blix will look to try and blitz his way up into third spot, potentially. He's behind by just a few points with Logan Clappett. 25 points back of him. Justin Kruitzoff, Wade Hayes, James King, Martin Kapal, and Diogo Melro round out your top 10 in the standings after four rounds of the season. You can see just outside the top 10 drivers like Daniel Thompson, Graham Raniers, and Sakowitz trying to turn things around with Tim Klesens and Clifton Cockrell, the only drivers in the triple digit club so far this season. It's been also a very competitive season for team standings. One thing you might notice, a slight change with the top of the standings. Radicals Online is on the top of the point standings. They still count as the Radicals Kinetico, oh, can, pardon me, collaboration. 
as now it's turned into Radicals Online for their points for the season. Lepel's Racing is in second spot just in, on top of Slip Angle Motorsports in the standings so far. Off Camber Motorsports is followed by work about Kinetic Racing. Behind them, Torque, Freak Racing, Blanchemont, Team Bushfink Racing, Team Mads Entries, and Atlas Simsport round out your top 10 for this year's team standing so far. As well, two more point standings to look at before we get to today's actions. We're looking at the manufacturer standing up on your screen right now. With the manufacturer, it's been a race season where we've seen the Chevys have consistent runs 371 to 349 over the Toyota so far this year. Meanwhile, as well with the road to Oval Sun, you're just going to see that up on your screen now where the roadside has a 20 point advantage over the oval side 374 to 354 is the gap right now for those standing. But now we turn things over to the race today. Drivers are finishing up the wall finally. Most drivers have put in their times for round number five. We've had some great action in Interlagos, Sonoba, Phillip Island and Twin Ring Motegi but Nürburgring it brings a whole lot more challenges to the season with Brands Hatch and Silverstone with Canadian Tire and Indies Road Course in VRR falling off on the schedule of this one. It gets harder from here on out, especially with that last race of the season at Bathurst on November the 3rd with Mid-Ohio just before that. But right now, again, turning the focus to today's action. Qualifying times right now in the 158s to as slow as the 204 range. With one driver left to put in a qualifying time, it is the one of the newest drivers in the field putting in a qualifying ten, time. Daniel Roper will make his debut tonight. As you can see on the qualifying board, Bobby Zelensky, a half a second lead on the pole right now. Logan Clamp at third. Caroni is in fourth with Wade Hayes rounding out the top five. Kamertz, Blex, Ruse, Melro, and Barraclo round out your top ten in qualifying. Now I bring in my partner, Gary Weaver, for today. It's going to be an absolutely challenging race, especially with last year, where it was a close race for Zelensky trying to hold off comp competitors before a la late race speeding penalty ended up leading to have him having a 24-second gap. What sort of challenges should we expect today here at Nürburgring? Well, it's obviously most likely going to be this track itself, as uh, well, it's only filled with about... Uh, 3.2 miles and 16 turns. Obviously, this track is very difficult to run at, especially in the trucks, but these drivers can make it work. The thing is, they have to be smooth on pit road, in and out, and you have to be careful when exiting. Have to be very careful for sure, or else you'll end up having a situation where you don't have a truck. Right now, everyone's getting all set to go for what should be an interesting race. Everyone's starting a grid up. Let's take a look at your starting grid for today's action for the V8 Super Trucks Championship. Bobby Zelensky starts on the pole by half a second over Marco Mulgren. Mulgren may have had the pace in practice by about half a second faster than the rest of the field. He'll start in second spot. Logan Clampett will look to continue consistency in third spot with John Caroni rounding out the top four in the fourth spot. Behind them, Hayes and Kammers will be in row number three, while Eric Blix, who's had some strong runs, will start alongside one of the newcomers for the field tonight, Daniel Roper from the New York region in the eighth spot. Ninth is Gabriel Ruse alongside by, with Diogo, Diogo Melro, with David Barraclo coming off a race with the sports car open. He'll start alongside Clifton Cockrell in the 12th spot. Behind them is Martin Kapal trying to have to work his way through the field. And Sakowicz will start in 14th. Starting shotgun in the field tonight is David Crozier. And with this kind of race, especially with some of the times, what do you think might be the winning strategy today for some of the drivers who are at the back of the field that didn't hit their marks that like they needed to in qualifying? Well, they have to be taking their time and as careful as possible not to push it too early. 20 laps and uh, if needed, an hour, 30 minutes for this race. So what they should do in the back, these drivers in the back that didn't get as much of a good qualifying time, I would think that the best strategy would be to just lay back and be as careful as possible on the start and the first few laps, take advantage throughout the, I'd say about lap five or so, or whenever you can, if necessary, don't take any unnecessary risks. Don't take an unnecessary risk. Be patient. Try and time things out. Definitely a good strategy overall. Trucks will start rolling on the racetrack as they try and get themselves positioned towards the front stretch. 
It's going to be an interesting and wild day and night so far. 20 laps once again is the distance where they'll try and hit their marks here and try and have consistency. For those wanting to keep onboard tabs, three drivers will be having onboard cameras for today's action for Socks Out Racing as we'll have those actions. A lot of drivers trying to have the best runs possible in their trucks as they'll try and get the best runs possible here. We'll see how things go here. Remember, they're looking to try and have the best hard charger. Try and get themselves charging through the field and potentially get themselves as this race's hard charger award. Meanwhile, they get st set up for the start of this one. Zelensky and Mogren will start as it'll be Zelensky as the control truck. He starts about a truck length and ahead of the outside line. Green flags up and they're away for round number five from Bert Nurberg ring. As they're already three wide entering the opening entry. Four wide, in fact, as they are very tight. Multiple trucks trying to bounce around. Bit of contact bouncing back and forth, but mostly clean to start this off. And still three wide, in fact, in the back portions of the field to start off today's race. Roper on the bottom side. Blix got bounced around a little bit. Barraclough's getting bounced around a little bit. His first race in a couple rounds here as he's trying to keep himself into the top 10 right now. Stuck in a side-by-side -side situation with Cockrell. Cockrell, though, on the forward line, but outbreaked into the corner. Backs off. He's being patient here to start off this first lap. Comes back, though, as Blix gets contact. That was coming from Barraclo, able to just save it. And already drivers trying to establish themselves early on, trying to get position single file now for a majority of the front runners. As Bobby Zelensky's in the lead, Logan Clampett second, Marco Mogren in third with Hayes and Kummers rounding up their top five, Gary. That was an exciting start of the race, and I feel bad for the A9 and Blix. He got bounced around a lot on that race, on that main start. They're almost five wide at one point, but luckily Blix is still going. He's sitting in ninth right now on the right-hand side. He just got passed by Barraclo for that top 10 position, or sorry, position number nine. So now that puts that number A9 back in 10th. But right now you're riding on board, and look at how loose that clamp it was. Coming out of that corner, he managed to hang on to it. I feel like we're going to be seeing this a lot. We could be here. You're falling on board of Mogren. As you can see, he was a part of the Kinetic Radical collab. Now, still part of the collab, but points, of course, part of Radicals Online. He's trying to dive himself forward. He had the pace in practice and was a contender in last year's running of the race. Now trying to find any way he can to poke his way around Clampett as they move their way down the straightaway. One lap into round number five of this year's race. As you see shuffling around behind them, battling for position, going towards the bottom side. That is Barracle trying to dive himself underneath for position, underneath Melro, gets into Melro as Melro puts sideways right on the pit exit of turn number one. And Melro loses a heck of a lot of time from that one as Barracle able to move up to eighth with that. Let's check out the replay. That was a very nasty situation for a split second there, Gary. Yeah, I can understand on why you want to uh, dive in there and get that position as best as possible, but there's really not enough room for Bear Club to get into the side of Melro there, so I'm not really sure if that was really a good idea this early on, but we're going to see if that helps him out later on. Meanwhile, looking at a swing and spring of trucks, I should really say here, as you're trying to see, that is second on back for the time being. Clampett trying to keep up to Zelensky, who is up to a 1.7 second gap. It's going to be a challenge there to try and catch up. Meanwhile, you're working on the battle now for four spot. This is Kemmerz, who's had a decent pace as well for practice for preparation for today. Wade Hayes currently in the fourth spot, trying to hold on for the position. As he sees right in front of him, you can see there's the move that was being waited on patiently in terms of pace. As looks like something's going on with Clampett because he just let everybody by. And not sure he's back up to speed at the moment, but maybe that was more of a strategy pull right there. We're going to check the replay there. Coming up on your screen, there goes the 257 of more, uh, more, more grin and and Clampett just lets everybody else by. So I believe that was just more of a strategy play, and he just doesn't want to get into anybody else's way as of right now i think it's less about strategy and more about a slowdown penalty because there is the risk of getting to where you cut the corner and will have to serve say half a second slowdown where you have you can't get back on the gas really 
until you get it slowed down. That ends up costing him a ton of spots all the way to six. That was in Schumacher S, of course, as this is right now Clampett trying to close his way back up. Daniel Roper, he's just going to let him on by. No, he's the faster truck of the situation as we are once again a couple laps into this one. A lot of good trucks at this point. Zelensky up to 2.5 seconds as the gap as he works his way right now, trying to pull on away in front of the group led by Mogren. As now Clampett trying to close on in. The next truck he approaches is Kemmerz as they work their way around. That is the Valvoline curve approaching the Ford curve. And this is a track where you will you see, of course, a lot on this series, a lot of side-by-side -side action. This is one of the examples right here. Eric Boix. Big time loose situation, meanwhile, with the side-by-side -side there for a split second. That was Gabriel Roos, who got a little bit slippery, it looks like. He's going to dive it on in, trying to keep the spot, but Sakowicz has the faster line. Contact with Sakowicz, and Sakowicz is in the sand, able to save it, but he's going to lose two, three, up to four spots on one little bit of contact on the right side of his truck. Yeah, you'd think that uh, that small of a contact on this size of a road course wouldn't really do much well it just did and let me replay up on your screen just that small little bit of contact sent him sideways almost about 15 20 degrees sideways he managed to save it but he got in the sand trap so i'm pretty sure if he managed to save it and still kept on the asphalt maybe he would have lost a bit at least uh one last position but nonetheless he did manage to keep going forward right now as we're watching the battle with clampett and the driver right in front of him daniel roper they work their way through the Coca-Cola curve. As you can see, knows there's the faster truck. Clampett's really loose, though, on the exit. Almost allows Roper back in. In fact, Roper's going to try and make the move on the outside. I don't think this is going to be able to stick unless he outbreaks them here and able to keep it side by side. I had to work the way through Hoghacken. Able to try and do it, but instead it's going to at least cost him the spot there. Caroni tried to take advantage. They approach now the Mercedes Arena as Caroni just follows back behind him for the time being. Now he's going to go back on the attack through the arena. Bit of contact on the left rear quarter panel of his truck. And Caroni keeps it side by side as Roper comes up right on top of him almost. They're still slipping and sliding, still bringing contact. Damage now on Roper's truck as they're still side by side. Going down towards the Valvoline curve. And now Roper's just going to take the spot as Caroni. Going to calm down and back off for at least one more corner. Not so much now. Almost contact yet again. And now to approach the Dunlap curve. Can he make the move though as he goes and goes towards the passing opportunity? Roper's there on the defensive line. Shuts the door. And Roper's going to secure the spot at least for the rest of this lap. That was an exciting battle through for that sixth place position there. Roper, I believe though, when he tried to power in front, look how sideways he is, my goodness. I think when he tried to get in front of Caroni, yes, he's gonna make his way, he's gonna protect, Never mind, Caroni to the left-hand side now. Into the corner now, and a little bit onto the curve, and Roper off track, a little bit sideways. My goodness, this is still an ongoing battle, but I think when Roper tried to power in front of Caroni, Maybe that was uh, Roper's way of saying, hey, I'm not sure if that was a good idea what you sh that you should have done that. But nonetheless, those two put on an exciting battle, and they're still going forward nonetheless, and they're still trying to battle out for this position now. And the race clutch truck of Caroni really had a late break, and they're trying to dive it in, able to make this time stick. Now he's going to have to try and get himself dived in once again through Hocken Hayden, try and get the position he needs to, doesn't get the exit he wants, so he might have to bonsai move it in if he wants to make the pass once again. That's what he might be thinking of. Decides against it, against dive bobbing in in case there's more contact like they had multiple times. But Roper takes it very wide as Caroni takes the spot. He'll move up to six with a huge mistake from Daniel Roper. It looks like Roper may have overshot his braking marker right there. Maybe he just braked a little bit too hard, lost control, and... Well, that just sent him off his original line, and that just sent back one position. There's a replay right here. As right now, Blix is uh, slowly co closing on Roper, but there he is just going way wide off the track. So that's going to send him back one position. But now Blix has uh, his sights on Roper right now. Can relax just a little bit as uh, he's got Bearflow right behind him. So essentially, this is just a little bit of a spread out battle for sixth place. Yeah, this battle could be going on for a little bit more if he can keep up this oh, pace. Oh, wow. 
383 of Wade Hayes just went off the track. He got really loose, and now he's going to lose two positions. No, three positions, actually. No, two positions as he now falls to fifth. Not sure what happened there, but here's a replay up on your screen as it comes up. Again, I think just a little bit too much braking, and that caused him to lose traction on board, and he has it saved just a little bit, gets into the gravel a little bit more than he wanted to go off track, but nonetheless, he is still continuing, but he's just falling back to fifth. Yeah, a lot of speed carried into the Dunlap curb, Dunlop curb, I should say. And now he falls back, as you said, to the fifth spot for the time being. Everyone really starting to calm their way down before they try and make some attacks here. Barrico is the next person trying to make an attack. Here. Maybe he's trying to be this, this race's hard charger, of course. With the hard charger each round, I analyze racing, giving a month subscription to the hard charger of the race. One of those, of course, gaining the most positions, the other being the most exciting in terms of racing and being able to gain some positions. Right now, some of these drivers near at the edge of the top 10 might be trying to think about that somewhat on top of, you know, trying to catch up and try and get to the win. That's going to be an interesting situation for the rest of the way as Barracol tries to use the defensive line going to Hoghaden. Going to go on the bottom side, able to have a decent line as Ruse. Just can't get the run he needs to on the separate line, but Barracol is really sliding around in his truck. That thing very loose on entry and apex as the Torque Freak Racing Machine going to have to fight on big time. You see right now going to go for the passes ruse again, but not on the preferred line. Work of a kinetic racing. He and his team trying to have strong ones again. And ruse is in position to make the pass. Can he get underneath Barracol? No, he cannot. He just can't get underneath them right underneath the quarter panel like he needs to to try and make the pass here, Gary. Maybe he wanted to. I could tell that Roos wanted to, but I don't think he wanted to chance it and, and end up taking out Barraclo in the process. So Dunlop curve again, turn number eight, and Roos, Barraclo overshoots a little bit loose on the left-hand side, saves it somehow. But he's got Roos on his left-hand side to worry about through the Schumacher S corner. Oh my goodness, that's a triple five. Almost squeezed Roos off the track, shoots through the corner. Not sure if that's a slowdown penalty or not. He's not slowing down yet. No, that is a slowdown penalty for the triple five. He did get the slowdown going through the sand, and that loses him at least three-tenths of a second on the slowdown. Going to have to give up the spot, but for Barraclo, he's going to have to try and recover and regroup after that situation. At least he's still in the top ten. It's about nine-tenths of a second back to Diego Melro on the field right now. Pit road, by the way, is open now for this race. Of course, you do have to make at least one pit stop. You can see the distance that Bobby Zelensky has now put away on Mogren. 2.5 to 2.6 seconds is the lead going between that mark, and he's trying to keep up that gap. Sven Kamertz is 7.4 seconds back in third with Logan Clampett and Wade Hayes rounding out the top five. 14 seconds back in sixth is DeAndre Caroni right now with Daniel Roper in seventh. Eric Blixt. He's been bounced around a little bit. He's still in the eighth spot right now, 17 seconds back of your current leader. He's, and again, Bobby Zelensky last year had a lot of close racing. Now he's being able to pull away from the field. Speaking of close racing, here's Roper again caught in the battle. This one's now trying to defend P number seven. He's slowly but surely starting to slide back in the field as now Blix tries to position himself here. This is, remember, Roper's first race in the series with high-performance motorsports as now Blixt. He's got a bit of a faster pace. Last time by, it was two-tenths of a second faster. You can tell that Blixt is hungry to get himself up to seven. I would not be surprised on Blix if he can get up to that seventh-place position. After all, it is that position where he started. So, in fact, these drivers are essentially just swap positions of where they started, where Blick started at seventh and Roper started eighth. So, through the Schumacher-esque winner through turn number 10 right here. Nothing doing as of yet. Blick looked like he lost a little bit of momentum through there, but nonetheless, he's still managing to do his best to keep pace with Roper. He can rope Roper back in. No pun intended there, but... Right now, essentially, seems to be a temporary stalemate. So if Blitz can get back up to seven, that would definitely help him out a lot. It definitely would for sure. You can see the field right now. Blitz lost a spot. Guess what? 
If he gets to seventh, he at least gets to a neutral position gained loss. He's trying to outbreak Roper right now to close up on the back door. And Roper's just going to let him on by. In fact, going to go into the pit lane right now. Looks like he might have had enough for the handling of this truck on lap, coming to lap number nine. And he is the first one of the first trucks to come into the pits here in this situation. In fact, the first truck. Quite an interesting call by Roper, but I would not be surprised. I'm not surprised, actually, especially with that heavy, heavy left rear quarter pound damage from earlier, from earlier's battle. So Roper looks like he's most likely going to get that fixed. Maybe fix uh, the handling just a little bit, but nonetheless, back up on track. A little bit of a battle now between the disease drivers in the back. You see 27 in the 84 right now riding on board. That's number 27 of Cockroll and the 84 of Melrose. So East Driver's battling out hard to the right-hand side. Can't get it in with Cockrell. So my goodness, he tried to get into the right-hand side, couldn't make it stick. And well, apparently it looks like the 84 just cut him off heading into that corner. But more essentially, it's more like a defensive cutoff. Yeah, a bit of a defensive cutoff, trying to hold on to the position at this point. This is for P number 12, mind you. By the way, Daniel Roper is now out of the pit. Remember, these drivers do not need to pit for fuel, but they sometimes might take a gallon or two to balance out the truck. They do, of course, have to, have to at least take some tires in this situation. So Roper being the first might be trying the undercut in this situation. As you can tell, these guys are going to have to battle for a long time here. They've got to make sure they don't lose too much time because if you zoom out somewhat, look at that train of trucks right behind them. They were all nose to tail at one point. Now they're slowly but surely losing a tenth here and there to Sakowicz, who is the next truck up to Melro at this point. Yeah, it's not too good of a... Uh, not too good for that whatsoever but a little bit of a spread out battle now not really just essentially but i end of the corner now for p number 11 is at number 64 of martin kapal sorry the number 88 my, uh, my apologies that's we now have the 323 in pit road and the triple five bear claw in pit road these are the next two drivers to enter so far and right now this is approaching the halfway point so a bit of a smart strategy to come in right about now come and get your tires Add a little bit of fuel if need be in terms of handling. And we'll see what they can do from here. They pit from just inside the top 10. They got to make sure they get some quick stops. For reference, Daniel Roper, a 13.9 was the stop for them. For him, I should say, both of them stopping the box. No one else following them in this time. Expect some drivers, though, to eventually follow them, go into the pits as we're approaching the halfway mark. Both of them off and away, 15.9 for Ruse. 15 14 1 for Barraclo so Ruse even with the slower stop just able to come out in front of Barraclo able to keep the 14th spot for the time being meanwhile up in front of them side by side Melrose and Cockrell once again Cockrell still trying to make the pass gonna think think conservative against poking his nose underneath the right rear quarter panel as they work their way across the track right now try and get themselves towards the Dunlop curve they're going to have even braking. Cockrell a little bit later, later on the braking. Maybe a little bit less power on the brake. Able to close the gap by about a tenth. He's still about a half a truck length behind. This is the closest position battle on the racetrack for the time being. These guys trying to have strong runs. You're trying to get themselves as many points as possible. Because for the time being, this would be for P number 10. As really pushing his Melro. Getting a bit squirrely on the exit. Cockrell can't take advantage, though, trying to get the poke underneath. Unable to do so as Melrose really loose. He might have to come in pretty soon and with the way this truck is handling, approaching the halfway point. As Cockrell has to back off there. Going to let Melrose stay out in front of him for the time being. Work it the way through the NGK chicane. Work their way through. Both of them going to stay out this time by. One truck is in the Wade Hayes into the pits. And Wade Hayes is the fourth of 15 drivers to enter pit road now. So, again, with essentially that these pit stop times is just as a little bit of a reference, about 15 seconds. So, Wade Hayes perfectly in his pit stall. So, right now, again, just uh, more spread out drivers, not really seeing anything. Although, another close battle is going to be between the 44 of Clampett and the 66 of Camerts. As now, Wade Hayes leaves his pit stall 14.1 seconds. 
Great stop by Wayne Hayes, and somebody went around on the racetrack. And it looks like we mentioned Mel Rowe. He was starting to get very loose. Well, you're seeing Mel Rowe on your replay right here. There goes the truck. There it goes spinning around. Able to stop it from hitting the Armco barrier. But I think now is the great time to pit after that spin. Able to keep the truck going. But back to that battle because it was a three-tenths of a second faster lap time for Clampett. Last time by, he's got the pace. In the past three laps, two minutes, six, 2.01, three, 2.01 flat. So he's got himself some fast pace compared to Kamert, who is running 2.01 flat, 2.01, 2.01, Reeling him in slowly but surely to try and get himself back into a podium spot. Now this is going to be great confidence for Clampett, but it's also going to help him out in the points, no less. Again, once again, no, Clampett actually had to pit road right now. Look at Cameron. It's also diving through the, uh, well, I guess it's essentially called the Gore area, I believe. So these two are also had to pit road, and so is the uh, 257 of Mogren as well. Everyone's starting to come in. Bobby Zelensky stays out on the track for at least one more lap. As everyone's following the majority of the leaders, Caroni in, Blixt in, Kapal in, Sakowicz in, Cockrell now coming in. Melrose should be coming in as well at this point with the way his truck's oh handling. My. It's going to be an absolute pit party here. you got to make sure you don't make any mistakes so where you end up not running over your box or end up going through. Mulgren's off and away. Quick stop, 13-9 for him. Most drivers running about the 13.8s, 14.2s. Mogren the first out. Kamertz out. Ka Clampett coming out. Caroni trying to get in. The rest of the field follows them on in at the edge of the pit box. And off and away. Some decent separation now, though, for Mogren. Kamertz able to get enough separation now from Clampett because Clampett had a 15.6 stop. Oh, that's... If it's always going to be a pit road if it's not going to happen on the track. But look at that, the 323 sideways right beside him. Essentially, that is for position as well on the track. So Blitz just barely came out in front of Gabriel Ruse there for eighth place. My goodness, if that wasn't timing close, I don't know what would be. That was amazing timing by Blitz to get out the pit road and take the defensive line as Ruse. Well, he tried to get into the left-hand side just on turn number one, couldn't get done. So... I believe Zelensky could be coming in this time if he's going to be splitting the race up half uh, half distance for his pit stop. So we're going to see if he's coming in this time around. I assume that he would. And it looks like, yeah, he's going to come in crossing over the stripes as Zelensky now finally able to come on in. One of two drivers not to come in the pits. The other was David Crozier. Expect him probably to come in in the next couple laps or so as Zelensky... Takes the slow roll here. Mogren, for reference right now, he is still rolling on the racetrack, of course, in open space, zooming his way to the NGK chicane, able to get onto a decent line separation. About 36 seconds when he came on in. Can he make the jump on Zelensky? That is the big question. Zelensky had an absolutely blistering pace in this race. And Zelensky should be finishing up his stop here. 13-7, one of the fastest of the day, off and away, taking advantage of pit box number one. And he's able to come out in front of Mogren by about 1.4 seconds. Perfect stop, 13-7, tied for the fastest pit stop of the day. That's an amazing job by Zelensky to get in and out of pit row as quick as possible, especially by the... Uh pit crew essentially I'm seeing here on JRT about 10th, two tenths actually, but 13.7 equals essentially what that is. So right now we're going to see if Mogren can somehow manage to make his way back up to Zelensky, but it looks like Zelensky is completely pulling that gap right now for first. He did that basically from the get-go. Remember, he won last year's race having a good truck, looking to maybe have a repeat situation as Mogren trying to do anything he can to try and gain up 1.6 seconds is the gap on the racetrack right now as this is getting very intense situations crozier's finally into the pits by the way at this point at right now why don't we go side by side so you don't miss a thing you're watching the v8 super trucks on race spot tv and i racing live
Fuel usage. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Hit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10 4, adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires. The car behind me is my Chili Bowl Midget, the one that I won the Chili Bowl with. And what's interesting about that is it's actually the car that iRacing scanned that's going to be available to all the iRacing members out there. Welcome back everyone to the V8 Super Trucks Championship for round number five from Nürburgring. Right now, quickly going through your top eight as we look at Lex. He is in the eighth spot right now, starting to close in on Daniel Roper. Bobby Zelensky, meanwhile, has been leading for the entire race. Led all 12 laps so far, Sven Kemertz. He's in third spot, quietly nine seconds back for the time being. Logan Clampett and Wade Hayes round out your top five. Juan Caroni and Daniel Roper, as mentioned, are behind them with Eric Blix closing the gap for seventh in the eighth spot for the time being with Gabriel Roos just closing in behind him. In fact, Blix is going to take that spot away right now on your screen as just moving to the outside was Roper to just bobble around at this point, trying to pull on away from here as Blix back to where he started in this one. Of course, though, there's a lot of things going on with the Sox Out Racing and with this series. One of them is the Road to NASCAR program, which, of course, there are three talented iRacers who have the opportunity to compete with the Patriot Motorsports Group NASCAR Development Program and compete in the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series. Of course, these drivers eligible have to be a part of the NASCAR Peak Anti-Free Series. And right now, some of the drivers competitive in eligibility Bobby Zelensky, Logan Clampett right now, who are in first and fourth, respectively. By the end of the season, November, they'll stop three, get a chance to have a seat and have a chance to compete as finalists to try and earn themselves that spot to be able to compete in the Wheel All-American Series for Patriot, for, pardon me, Patriot Motorsports Group. It's a unique opportunity, that's for sure. And it's a program where some people from iRacing being Dan Philpine, Philpo, pardon me, was one of the par, par, people, a part of that program, and it's a growing team for sure. A big time opportunity for some of the drivers to get a chance to drive in real life. And with that, of course, um, at this point, Daniel Roper still up on your screen at this point, but at this point, it's been a decent run for Daniel Roper, I have to say this, Gary, where He's been having, he's been holding on his own. He's been up and down a little bit on the field, got to his highest fifth spot. Now in the eighth spot for the time being, he's having a decent debut, that's for sure, for the series. Yeah, he's back to where he starts right now. In fact, that's the same for uh, a good amount of this field. First, second, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 15th. So Roper, for his first race, is doing an amazing job right now, just hanging on to that position, but he does have a... Uh, Good amount of damage, not good as in it's great, but uh, good as in it's decent, but it's not affecting him all that much as we turn our attention back to the battle between first and second. It's still brewing just a little bit, about 1.2 seconds right now, at least 1.1 seconds separate Bobby Zelensky and and uh, Marco Mogren. I've seen uh, just before once the break, Mogren, or at least during the break, was closing the gap just a little bit, and as of right now, Seems like he's doing that, but on corner exit, Zelensky looks like he's just that bit better, but Mogren still closing that gap sideways, keeps it going forward. Yeah, he's just trying to keep this ground here. It's about 1.2 to 1.3 seconds going back and forth between that. He's been having the pace where he's able to close in 
surprisingly much better in terms of how the truck I think is handling how it's running compared to the first half of this race because remember before Zelensky was able to pull on away now not so much gotta wonder maybe he made a slight adjustment on the pit stop or something to be able to get the speed he needs to, to be able to balance things out at the very least with Zelensky for this round. one lap time remember last time by three tenths of a second faster was Marco Mogren yeah, I believe it could have been that uh, pit stop timing or maybe Mogren changed his uh, air pressure just a little bit in some of his tires. That could be it. Or maybe it could be the fact that uh, they pitted at least within a lap of each other last time I checked. So Mogren pitted first along with the majority of the field and then Zelensky directly after about on uh, his lap 12. So essentially these drivers are running on equal, wear, equal worn tires except Mogren is worn just a little bit more. I would not be surprised if he was conserving just a little bit. You can see the kilometers right there, picking at about 140 miles per hour there into the uh, chicane. And my goodness, really sideways was that number 257. He's still going forward, however. So thankfully for him, he is still essentially hovering with the same gap. It just keeps fluctuating between about 1.2 to about 1. now, 1.5 seconds. Once again, our graphics today are brought to you by N Warren Design. Beautiful graphic to show the gears and the RPMs right now. As you see the battle with Mogren still trying to close in, but slowly but surely falling off there. Meanwhile, position battle going on. This is 4P number 8. Meanwhile, back Gabriel Ruse trying to get by Guy Roper. He almost had the chance coming through the Coca-Cola curve, but ended up having to back off so he didn't bump into the right rear quarter panel once again of Roper, who's trying to have the late braking. He's been having a decent pace. Remember, he he had been the part of the undercut group, but Roper has the oldest tires on the racetrack because he went in the full, as the first truck to come on in. So maybe those older tires starting a bit of pay, a bit of a toll at this point here. At this point of the race, five laps to go for round number five. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Roper's tires were worn that to the point where he's getting loose pretty much off of every corner, and it looks like he is. So maybe Roper, during the time that he pitted to now, maybe he decided to push the car just a little bit more than necessary. And right now, it's not really that corner. He's fine, just a little bit loose off. You can see on board with uh, Gabriel Bruce, who was just almost clipping the uh, grass coming off the corner there. So. Right now, heading into the their next turn, nothing really. Roos looking to the right-hand side and just barely protecting was Roper. Look at the times, too. Lap 13 gaining 1.7 seconds. Then on the last lap, a Sneller six-tenths of a second. So Roos knows he's got the fresher tires and the faster truck at this point of the race. He's just got to find the right place to be able to make the pass in this situation to make sure he doesn't bump into Roper in this situation. Good reminder, by the way, who do you think is the most exciting driver today? Let us know in the Race Spot TV and I Racing live chat and let us know because that driver could be in contention for the Hard Charger Award. But of course, is decided upon with a fan vote on the SOR Facebook page after the race. That person will be up against the biggest mover, the greatest positive change in position, as Ruse is trying to at least gain another spot here right now. If he gets the gain spot, maybe he can be eligible because that's going to be a plus one in for him in this situation. You can see from the bumper he's trying to gain that. You see the biggest mover of the race so far has been Sven Kamertz at this point with three positions gained and very close to almost getting on the back bumper to try and get his spot as you've seen was Ruse. He's right on the doorstep, hungry to get himself up to P number eight. I think Ruse was uh, out breaking just a little bit more and maybe just putting a little bit less power on his braking. So essentially he's still closing that gap. He's close that he just has to somehow find the right timing to get alongside that number 61 of Roper, but Roper is doing a wonderful job hanging on to this position right now as we are on four laps to go and still that 323 of Roots is trying to figure out whatever he can do to get by for that eighth place position and gain that one position. Trying to do everything again going late on the brakes here trying to close up to Roper Ruse just can't get the speed he needs to through the middle portions of the track. It seems like he gets on the back door, 
then ends up having end up losing some of the time in some of these sections here. I think right now he has the faster truck down the streets, but in the tighter turns, Roper's been able to have a slightly better precision to be able to keep the place for the time being. It's going to be an absolute challenge here at this point. Still an absolute challenge, meanwhile, up at the front. Bobby Zelensky just taking three laps to go at the start and finish line as he's right now grown the gap up at the front to 1.9 seconds over Marco Mogren. That is your quick update with the leaders as they run into lap traffic. That is David Crozier. Crozier just moves on the way. He's just going to stay on the bottom side, let Mogren go on the high side as they approach the Mercedes Arena. Keeps it clean, stays out of trouble, and keeps the balance of the same gap for the lead at this point. Back to that position battle, meanwhile, because Ruse going down the front stretch once again out of the Coca-Cola curve, down towards the Hawkhead, and trying to get himself late breaking yet again. Just can't get the nose underneath because of that very tight bend. Meanwhile, pit road is closed. You have a truck that's handling a bit off. You got to keep it from here on out, obviously. Yeah, if you could have uh, dealt with that ever since the pit stops and you can deal with that for just three extra laps and Roper's still a little bit heavily sideways, it seems, uh, repeatedly just throughout that, just uh, throughout the exit of turn number three. So he's still hanging on to it again, just through the uh, Mercedes Arena there. But now they're hanging down into the Ford Curve and Roos still trying to get down to the right-hand side, at the very least, or at least on the top, on the on the back bumper. Sorry, that was uh, my mistake. I believe that was actually uh, turn number eight. So that was uh, Dunlop. Nonetheless, still at 3.23, trying to figure out whatever he can do. He keeps trying, uh, maybe I believe he's trying a little bit too much, and that's going to be uh, wearing out his tires just a little bit more. And oh, onto the <laughs> curbs as well. That could be also another problem. You can see that the 3.23 is taking the curbs a little bit more than uh, Roper is. Roper isn't really taking the curbs as much, but Ruiz is taking almost every curb. Yeah, he, you can tell he's pressing to try and gain the time. This speed, by the way, is in kilometers per hour, where he's running about 115 down to up to 160 now, 67. Look, we're getting up into third gear, but every time he seems to bounce off those curves, mind you, it seems like he's losing that little extra bit of time and speed on the track. Plus, on top of that, he's late breaking every single corner to the point where he almost had a possibility of cutting the corner there to try and keep up to Roper up in front of him. Two laps to go meanwhile, so he knows it is put it or show it time here for round number five of the V8 Super Trucks here at Nürburgring's Grand Prix circuit. Battle was, uh, oh, sorry, Justin. I was going to just oh. say, that was a very close situation. Roper took the corner wide. He's had that problem through turn number one with Hokagen just had tried to go for a higher arc by the way trying to just keep the spot at this point still trying to keep at least a pot a neutral gain for this race meanwhile something just happened then with david crozier because he is in the pit interesting situation with the pit road closed and you know what happened it's out of mercedes arena where he ended up having one rough situation where he ended up getting the truck loose. He's been running at the back all day, way off the pace in the 36 truck for Team Mad. And in this situation, looking at how this truck's been running and how he just ended up losing even more so time, I think he just decided, you know what? I'm just going to take my losses and park it as he, you can see, just swung himself to the grass. And Roos had barely gotten to the right-hand side of Roper, but right now it doesn't seem like it as uh, these drivers are still spread out essentially. A good amount of Roper, sorry, Roos still trying to do whatever he can. Roper, for this final lap, he'll have to actually take the very defensive line. White flags now out for Bobby Zelensky, still up to now a 3.2 second lead. As you can see, Mogren unable to keep up with the pace. The gap has grown even more so as the laps have started clicking on. 3.3 seconds. This was a gap at about two seconds a few laps ago. So the worn tires starting to take their toll. Remember, Zelensky was the second to last truck to go into the pits. 
and right now he's trying to keep up his domination for the V8 Super Trucks for this season. Meanwhile, battle for position again. This is still a battle with Roper and Ruse. This is now their final lap here. Again, trying to get for P number eight. Again, Ruse trying to go for the late ba breaking. Again, Roper bouncing around on entry. And again, Roper's on the outside line, but Ruse can't do it. Can he get the crossover? No, he cannot in this situation. He's going to stay on behind, bobbing around a little bit and trying to keep up. Uh, one or two more passing opportunities he has left, I think, to be able to get the job done. And you can see right now, just can't get where he wants to be. Six tenths of a second back. It's going to be very difficult. And he's a mistake from Roper, who is on the most worn tires on the racetrack at this point. Can't get underneath, can't keep up with this situation. As right now, at this point, they're trying to get the best runs possible. But for Bobby Zelensky, he's a few corners away from coming away with another dominant victory for this season. This will be back-to-back -back victories at the Nürburgring. This year, he didn't need Lady Luck. He just had the perfect and most dominant truck of the race. Leads every single lap, 20 laps led. He'll take the checker flag with Nürburgring and win round number five. He wins four of five to start the 2018 season. Going now back to Barraclo. Barraclo having huge trouble on the last lap. His truck is destroyed. Right before the checker flag comes, he was in a side-by-side. -side. I think that was Capali was side-by-side -side with. Gets into his left rear quarter panel and ends up sending himself into the tire barrier. He's in 12 spotted after that situation, but huge mistake on the last lap. Costs him at least two spots in that situation with a very damaged truck here. Mulgren finishes second, Kemmert in third, Clampett comes away fourth, Wade Hayes in fifth, that position battle we were talking about, Roper comes away with the set, with the eighth spot with Caroni and Blitz in front of him, Roos has to settle for ninth with Kapal rounding out your top ten, a lot of good action in this one Gary, and a lot of loose trucks here on this last lap as they try and get themselves to the checker flag but a good competitive race for round number five, Gary. That was absolutely exciting, and I wouldn't be, I'm definitely not surprised as right now. You can see the 84 of uh, Diego Melro, 13th as of right now. Unfortunately, he started 10th, so three positions down from where he started, but he'll come off the final corner and finish this race, and left, I believe, is at number 27 of uh, Clifton Cockrell. He's just now coming out of the final corner. So that was absolutely amazing, and I'm not surprised if uh, everybody was loose on that final lap as everyone was starting to uh, push for whatever position that they could get, or at least as much time as they could get on that whatever job was in front of them. Unless you're Bobby Zelensky, then in that case, well, uh, I think he could just relax. He was able to just relax for much of this race, led every single lap from start to finish. And Bobby Zelensky keeping up the momentum he's had all season long, coming away with an air victory. Your unofficial race results up on your screen for the V8 Super Trucks Championship round number five from Nuremberg Rings Grand Prix Circuit. Mogren, he had been gaining up and down a little bit, but the tire wear too much to overcome in the closing laps falls to 3.7 seconds back. Ben Kamertz finishes off in third today. Him and his teammates able to have strong runs in second and third. Logan Clampett and Wade Hayes round out your top five with Clampett going up and down the board a little bit, able to recover to get himself to four. Caroni and Blix follow them off in sixth and seventh with Daniel Roper in his debut for High Performance Motorsports, able to hold on for P number eight. Gabriel Ruse rounds out with ninth behind him was Martin Kapal. That was a distance of 13 seconds. Magic Sekowich found rounds out inside the next grouping in the 11th spot. David Barraclo in the 12th spot today after having huge trouble on the last lap. Diego Moreau had a very loose truck at points of this race for Team Matt. He comes away 13th. Clifton Cockrell and David Crozier round out your top 15 for today's race interesting action today for this one here on iRacing Live and Race Spot TV. When we come back from the V8 Super Trucks Championship, we'll be with your back with your post-race coverage here on iRacing Live.
averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons, change right side only. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo, 10 4, adding 5 gallons, changing right side tires. Well, that was absolutely a thrilling race here for round number five of the V8 Super Trucks Championship. 
with Socks Out Racing from the Nürburgring Grand Prix No Chicane Circuit here on iRacing Live and Race Spot TV. For some portions and for much of the portions, it was a dominant race for Bobby Zelensky. He's had a strong start to the 2018 season, coming away with the fourth of five victories to start off this season. Absolutely entertaining one for sure. Now joining us in the broadcast booth, why don't we bring Bobby Zelensky in and see hey, how he's so. feeling. And apologies there. Looks like he's discussing things here and happy, probably, to be able to pull away and lead every single lap, Bobby. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I was just discussing with uh, fellow drivers there. Had a had a good time, but yeah, went really well. It was it was pretty close though with uh, with Marco um, the whole race, and uh, I was able to pull up a little bit of a gap at the end. But uh, yeah, it, he he pushed me for sure. Yeah, he looked like he was gaining for parts of the parts of that run there, keeping and maintaining it at least at about one point four to one point seven seconds. Gotta ask this for sure here. How did you set up the truck to be where it was absolutely dominant like the way it was today? You had blistering warm-up times, blistering qualifying time of about six to half a second to six tenths faster than the rest of the field. What did you do to try and get this truck to be as fast as it was today to keep up your domination? Really about being comfortable and, um, you know, I think this was, other than Sonoma, this was the most comfortable I went just from like initially doing my first laps of practice, I was pretty much hitting the line right away. I felt really comfortable. It's, I think it's one of my better road courses. I did pretty decent in the Road to Pro Series here in the F1 car. Just I know the track really well, and then I, I really didn't change much on on the set used uh, from the last race at Motegi because um, that was a colder race. This was a colder race. So it was about the same handling. It was just all about being comfortable, really, in these things. It's That's pretty much... But you need to have, you just need to be comfortable and uh, feel in control. And I think, uh, man, I just felt really good driving out there. Uh, one of my better races for sure. You've been in full control, it seems, for much of the early parts of the season. Next race, we go to Brands Hatch. How are you feeling about that? And what kind of work do you think needs to be put in to keep up the pace and the amount of wins you've been having so far? Yeah, that's interesting. I've never race there i don't think so uh i don't think i've ever raced anything there like think about it so it's gonna take a little bit more practice for sure especially in uh especially in a truck but um i've raced it on like f1 2013 a few years ago so i know the track but it's obviously uh, a bit different on iRacing but uh, it should be it should be fun especially in a truck but uh yeah, i don't know how i'll do maybe uh maybe we won't have the pace maybe we will but we'll see We'll see if you do have the pace in that one. As right now, why don't we ask you one more thing? Is there anyone you want to thank for being a part of your absolute domination, so to speak, to come away with the victory today for Slip Angle Motorsports? Yeah, thanks to, thanks to my sponsor, especially on the car, Virtual to Reality TV and Payday GG. Obviously supporting the uh, SOR truck efforts, and uh, they're doing great things for sim racing. Uh, obviously, it's a shout out to Virtual Racing School, Data Packs Coaching, all that good stuff over there to help you, uh, help you in your driving. Um, and uh, shout out to everybody who showed up in race today. Shout out to everybody who watched, and uh, thanks to everyone at SOR for putting the show on. And thank you for joining us in the broadcast booth. Congratulations on the victory with all 20 laps led by Bobby Zelensky. It was a great run for him, also a good run for Marco Mogren. Why don't we let Gary Weaver speak to him? He came away in second, Gary. Yeah, Marco Mogren, you had the pace just after pit stops. You were closing the gap just a little bit, ever so slightly, but unfortunately, you couldn't catch up to Zelensky. No, I couldn't. I, uh, I did my best, but um, uh, losing um, second position there at the start uh, gave Bobby a bit of a head start, and... Um, once I got past Logan, I couldn't close the gap. <laughs> I guess if I had been just that one and a half second closer, I could have challenged for the lead at the pit stops. But uh, yeah, um, P2 is still pretty good. I did manage to pull off a podium finish, especially after uh, finishing where you started. So essentially, 
not that bad of a race, but throughout the race, we've been seeing drivers getting loose out of the corners, so uh, most likely you've definitely had uh, your own little moments here and there with uh, getting loose out of the corner. So with that, did you change anything in your uh, pit stops to try and counteract getting loose out of the corners? Uh, no, I actually didn't. Um, we did struggle, uh, me, and, uh, me and Sven, with uh, getting a setup down for the race. But um, I, I, in practice now, just before we started to find some some clues how to settle the car, uh, then it's just uh, trying to uh, handle the the slipperiness of the car in general. Um, but uh, no no changes in the, uh, during the pit stop. I did an amazing job hanging on to that. So. After finishing second, anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, uh, my team, of course, um, working with Sven and um, our sponsors, Arma, uh, Six Sideways, uh, JRT, and uh, of course to the SR, SOR um, executive team for uh, putting on this series and for Race Plus for covering it. Uh, we thank you as well in return for putting on an amazing show for us here today. Thank you. It was a good run, run for Mogren in this one. That's for sure, Gary. And why don't we bring in his teammate here? He also had a decent run today. He was 13 seconds back compared to his team. He was 3.7. Still comes away third. Sven, how are you feeling about the top three finish today? Um, after qualifying, I can't really complain. So um, if I would have uh, done a better job at qualifying, I would have uh, maybe challenged a bit more or kept up with uh, Bobby and Marco. But uh, from where I started, I think third was the best I could do. So I'm quite happy with that. Gaining plus three, starting off sixth in this race. How is the truck feeling in your opinion? Because your teammate mentioned you just, both of you really, started to hit what you needed to get sort of around that point in terms of how the truck was feeling and how the truck was handling in terms of speed and handling in general? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the last setup we just tried was... Oh, I, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, no, no, this is not going to work, but uh, lap times proved different in practice, so uh, yeah, we tried it and it did, did seem to work, so... What, what, what was the part of that setup that you thought didn't work that did end up working, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it was just uh, with or a few setup things, uh, setup well, changes that I, I've always been told that you shouldn't have to, that should be other the other way around basically. But uh, yeah, in the end it worked, so I'm definitely gonna have to see what it can do for our uh, next races as well. That next race is at Brands Hatch. That race going to be an interesting one. How do you feel about that race? Uh, should be very interesting. It's uh, not an easy track on. Uh, on, uh, with normal road cars and with the trucks, it, uh, with all the angulations, uh, I think it should be quite good fun as well. Should be a good one for sure. Is there anyone you want to thank before we let you get going? Uh, yeah, at first uh, I would like to say, actually, I just uh, recently changed, uh, switched, switched teams and I would first like to thank uh, everyone from Creative Racing for uh, a very good uh, past two years, basically all ex-members from Black Adder Motorsport. And uh, next up, I would like to thank everyone participating in the race uh, from uh, for Kiva, Kinetic Racing, and uh, my teammate Marco Morgan as well. And finally, I have a few sponsors shout out. Uh, that would be Six Sideways, Joel Real Timing, Cranfield Simulation, Aster Sim Race, and Arma Centrum. Thank you very much for joining us in the broadcast booth. Congratulations on the top three finish in this one. Definitely much deserved. Thank you. That was a great run for him, able to hold on to third spot. Just four seconds back was Logan Clampett. But now with your most exciting driver is Gary. That most exciting driver making his debut was Daniel Roper. Gary? Well, Daniel Roper, you started eighth and finished eighth, but you also held off. You managed to hold off that number 60, or sorry, that number 323 of uh, Ruse on those closing laps. And, well... Essentially, for your first race, it's pretty. Uh, I'm be surprised if it's amazing for you to be uh, selected, if you will, as the most exciting driver of today's race. 
Yeah, it was definitely an eventful race. I wasn't really sure what to expect uh, coming in. I didn't, didn't practice a whole lot and was just kind of hoping I could hang around and be somewhat competitive. Um, but definitely a fun race, a lot of clean racing from all the guys, and uh, glad to be a part of it. Yeah, you've done an amazing job, essentially, uh, also in the opening portions of the race where everyone's just getting bounced around and you managed to just to make your way through so congratulations on that so essentially for this race even though you finished uh where you started how is that car handling for you uh throughout this entire race um definitely was struggling with it a little bit you know, i just got back on i racing after a year off about three weeks ago so I'm still trying to find my my footing a little bit um i'm always been pretty decent on opening laps coming from my real life experience and then I just couldn't hold those guys off after a couple laps so just tried not to cause too much chaos well three weeks back and you've been selected as a, an exciting driver so before we let you go anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to for essentially uh, your finishing position and being the most exciting driver uh, probably the excitement I'd like to Give a shout out to Logan Clampett for making it even more exciting. And uh, thanks to HPM Motorsports for being on the truck. Well, we are going to go ahead and let you go. Congratulations once again. Thank you. That was definitely someone that was fairly happy with his race. Someone as well that should be fairly happy with his race. Started 13th, finished off in 10th. Most position gained for this one, Martin Kapal. How are you feeling about the top 10 finish? Uh, I guess not as excited as it, as it might sound. Uh, yeah, I mean, top 10 is a good result, but uh, overall, I didn't have a good start. Uh, I was still on the tail end of the race and just only managed to climb up into last laps. You were still able to climb up through some issues with a couple trucks here and there and able to still ha do things here. One thing I do want to ask, there was a situation with you and Baraclo at one point in this one. Talk us through what happened from your perspective, if you don't mind talking about that real quick. Yeah, it was, uh, I noticed that I was uh, a little bit faster than him in the last couple of laps, so I was hoping to catch him in the, in the end of the race, which uh, I managed, but uh, yeah, he seems to be, he, he seemed to be quite, uh, uh, he seems to have bad, bad tires, so he was, you know, all over the place. Uh, so I expected him to uh, slide around a lot, and uh, I mean, there wasn't no, there was no contact from my side. Uh, so it seems like he spun by himself, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, I mean, it wasn't intentional from my side, so I don't know. Of course, though, there is some time, of course, to regroup until the next. That next race being, of course, at Brands Hatch in the next couple weeks in the early parts of June. What do you think you need to do with the truck to be able to regroup, have the best setup possible to be able to improve on just a top 10, uh, just a 10th place overall finish? Yeah, I think the next track will be tough. Uh, it's not an easy track to drive on with cars and uh, yeah, it will be, it'll be hard to set it up properly. And I think it will be to just be smooth as always with these cars and avoid any mistakes or maybe contacts with other people just yeah that's about it is there anyone you want to thank before we let you get going i just like to thank you uh, th thank you thank you thank you too and uh, everyone who made this possible and thanks eric Blix to uh to, who helped me with the setup and the practice and stuff so thanks and thank you for joining us in the broadcast booth. Congratulations on having the most positions gained. You're eligible, of course, for the Hard Charger Award. Thanks, yep. And real quickly, Gary, it was a race where, yes, you had Bobby Zelensky lead every single lap, but there's a lot of good battles going on. What are your final thoughts for today's action? Well, my final thoughts would be that uh, this week it was absolutely exciting, especially with the opening laps. I think we were five wide at one point just in the opening lap, no less. So that was essentially a very, very exciting, amazing performance by all of these drivers. And congratulations to Daniel Roper and Martin Kapal for most exciting driver and most positions gains respectively. So 
essentially, I think that this race was very exciting, and next week is going to be even better. Next race is definitely going to be even better. Remind you one, one more time here, the Hard Charge Award, of course. There is a fan vote going to be taking place on the Socks Out Racing Facebook page. Just type in Socks Out Racing, go and take part of the poll, because that poll will decide who wins a free one-month subscription to I Analyze Racing for the Hard Charger Award. And this one, that's going to be interesting to see in this, to see who comes up on top of this one. And make sure you take part of the poll. Of course, with the V8 Super Trucks Championship next race taking place at Brands Hatch, that's going to be in a couple weeks' time. And you can see all the sponsors that are a part of today's coverage to make sure this race went as smoothly as can be with the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Trucks Championship. And Ward Design having a lot of beautiful designs as part of this. Paul Smith once again with the directing and camera work for today's broadcast. And a lot more people on top of that to thank as you see up on your screen. But today, it was an entertaining race. It was domination for Zelensky. But we'll see from here on out. Can Zelensky keep the momentum for Gary Weaver? I'm Justin Prince saying good night from beautiful Germany. And be sure to watch more action on iRacing Live and RaceBot TV.